Hi everybody, today we're going to have some fun. This is going to be a tutorial that you're going to want to bookmark because we're going to explore something really interesting. So what I have here is a canvas page with a banner and this banner isn't just normal text. This is text that's filled with an image. So I'm going to teach you how to put an image inside of your words and we're going to be using PowerPoint today. This is a technique that you could use various platforms for like Photoshop or GIMP, but I'm just going to use Microsoft Office because a lot of teachers have that. And this is a really simple interaction once you learn how to do it and it really opens up the possibilities for what you can do in your Canvas course with your banners. So here on this dummy page, I'm going to scroll down so that we can get the concepts. Essentially what I did is I took a text box and then I added a picture and I was able to combine those two elements together to create a text box that is full of picture. So let's jump in and look at behind the scenes. Here I am in PowerPoint and you can see my various interactions here. I have a text box and then I've already converted the text box to an image and I added a drop shadow just so that there could be some contrast because the borders are really soft and it's sitting on top of dark background. Now there's a couple ways to do this in PowerPoint. The first one, this doesn't always work, but let me take this image. So I have this image of fruit. You can see, well, fruits and vegetables, more vegetables, I guess, than fruit. And I'm gonna take this image and copy it. And now I have this text box. For this to work, you really want a text box with really bold letters. And so I have this font called Intro Rust Base, which I absolutely love, but there's others that are free, like Aharoni, and Calibri is pretty good if you can bold it. For this one, let's try Segway UI Black. And you might want to go on the internet and actually download some really bold, bubbly letter font, because the thicker the letters, the better this effect is going to be. So let's look at a couple ways to do this. I'm actually going to duplicate this slide first. I'm going to copy this picture and then this text box, I'm gonna go ahead and go to format shape. And what we want is the text options here and we're gonna fill it. You can fill it with a picture or a text fill. And so I'm gonna fill it with a picture from the clipboard. It looks like it already did that. But you can see the problem there is that the picture is a certain degree tall and I'm making it really short and, I, and it squishes it down and see how all of those fruits and vegetables are really smashed in there. And so to get around that, what I could do is I'm gonna take this image and I'm gonna blow it up so that it's the width of the page right here. And I'll go ahead and put that behind the text and maybe this text, I'll make it a smidge bigger, not 115, maybe, I don't know, 105. I can play around with it so it's the width of the page and now I can take this picture and if you double click on it, you can go to crop and we're going to crop it down so that it's a narrower height. And that way it's about the same height as the lettering here. So now when I go ahead and copy that, then you'll see when I go to format this picture, I'm gonna to go to text options. I'm gonna fill it with a picture. And when I go to clipboard, then you can see it looks much better. So that actually looks like whole fruit and it doesn't look like everything's smashed in there. And of course, if I go back to the crop here, maybe I didn't want that part. So this is, if just looking at colors, you got the purple and the red, yellow and green. Maybe I wanted something a little bit different. So you can stretch this around or move this around and you can find the portion of the picture that you want. Go ahead and copy that portion and go back to the text. I'm going to fill the text with the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and select clipboard and then you can see it filled it with the new thing that I copied. So that's one way to do it. And this is the way I don't necessarily prefer this way. I like to have a little bit more control over it. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm gonna take this image, I'm gonna blow it up once again. I'll make it to the full size of the screen. And I'll go ahead and crop it down. I'm gonna double click and just drag that edge right there. And I'm gonna put this underneath the rest of the text. And let's blow this up again. What did we have, 105 before? I might even go up to 110, make it about the width of the page there. Now I'm gonna do something different than I did before. I'm going to highlight the picture and then I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and highlight the text box as well and go to shape format and we're gonna merge the shapes and we're gonna merge the intersect. And look at that, it merges the picture and the text. But what's interesting about this is if I go ahead and double click on this and click crop, I still have the original picture behind me and so I can move that around. You can get the exact portion of the screen that you want to fill those words. So here maybe I'll want to make sure that I get like that grapefruit back there. And also I can shrink this down a little bit. I can put it right to the edges and so that you get a little bit more detail. It depends if you want to zoom in or zoom out. In fact, if I were to zoom out, then I could make this really big as well. This happens to be a pretty high resolution picture. 
And so I can get pretty precise. It just depends on what I want. And so this method gives you a ton more freedom. And then when I click out, then I can see my text box here. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. What I might want to do is if I go up to that picture format ribbon right there, I may want to put a picture border around it, maybe a, a soft border, just so that the edges have a little bit of definition. And it can be a colorful edge too, maybe like a, a light blue or something. What I did, if I go back to this first slide, you notice there's a drop shadow right there, and you can definitely put a drop shadow pretty easily just using the format picture. But what I happened to do for that one is I duplicated the text box and put it behind it and just a little bit to the side. And then the last step is we want to convert this to a picture so that we can put it into Canvas. And so you click this and then you can go to Save As Picture. And I'm going to save it as a PNG as opposed to a GIF. Just in case there's any kind of color in the background of my Canvas page, then I don't want there to be white like inside of the circle might be a white space or inside the A might be white space or between the letters. I want that just to be the blend into the color of the background. So I'm gonna save it as a PNG. This one, I already have a How to Canvas one, so I'm gonna save this as number two. Now let's hop back over to Canvas. We're gonna edit this page and we're going to put this banner, maybe we'll put it part way down the page. So I'm going to insert the picture. I'm gonna search for it right where I saved it, How to Canvas two. I own the rights to this because I just now created it, so I'll go ahead and submit that. And then lastly, this is a pretty large image, and so I'm going to want it to stretch for 100% of the width. I'm just going to mark this decorative for now for accessibility purposes, and click Done and Save. And now you can see my second banner right there. It's as an image, it spans 100% the width, and so what that means is that if the screen is small, then the banner actually adjusts so that it fits the width of the page. And I think that's an ideal effect. That's something that you're gonna to want to aim for is a percentage of the width. So as you can see in my PowerPoint slide, I downloaded a whole bunch of pictures so that we can try this effect really quickly. And how do I get pictures is either you can go to an online repository like unsplash.com or Pexels, or you can simply, if you have the Microsoft Office subscription, you can go to stock images. And for these pictures that I had, I simply searched for something like textures or design. And there's all kinds of things to choose from. I like this brick wall. If you want to go something organic, then you have leaves. Or if you want something grungy or architectural, urban, there's all kinds of things to choose from. And so let's quickly uh, go through and create a few more banners here. I'm going to adjust this and I'm actually going to push it to the back. You can go to arrange and you can send it backwards. I actually, I like adding some of these elements to the Quick Tools toolbar. And so I have a toolbar, a quick tool to send items to the back. All right, so now I have my image selected, select the text box. We're gonna go to shape format and merge those shapes and just keep the intersect. And this one's a pretty uniform background. There is a bit of a gradient, but if I wanted, I could go to crop and I can just make sure that I have that portion that I want. It looks like at the bottom, it's a little bit darker, kind of vignetted than at the top. And so, yeah, you can choose what you want. Let's try it again with this one. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and I'll send it to the back just so I can see the text box. First, you have to click the image and then you click the text box, holding shift, then highlight the text box. The order is important. If I do it the opposite way, if I highlight the text box and then the shape and then go to shape format and keep the intersect, it's not gonna do anything. It just keeps the, the words. So. First, you want to highlight the shape or the picture, and then you want to highlight the text box. Keep that intersect. And now I have a wood paned panel right here. I can move that around however I want. One thing I wish that I could do is in this crop, then I wish that I could rotate, easily rotate the image in the background. And if you want it rotated, then actually that's something that you probably want to do beforehand. To show you what I mean, let's take this last image right here and let's rotate it so that it's long like this. And I'm just going to stretch it out so that it covers the words. And then I'll send that to the back. And now with it rotated, then I can do the same effect. So I'm gonna click on the image, hold shift on the keyboard, click on the text box, and we're gonna go up to shape format, and we're gonna keep the intersect. And now you can see that the image is at an angle. And so that creates kind of an interesting effect too. If I click on crop, then you can see that I can move things around. I didn't really give myself much room, but I can make this bigger if I wanted to zoom in, and then I can move it around a little bit to get the right texture precisely where I want it. Now this one's probably, there's not a lot of contrast with these letters. It's gonna be really hard to see. And so in this case, I'll probably either want to put a border 
or maybe a shadow. Like I could put a, a drop shadow around it. And if you don't like the defaults, you can go ahead and go to Format Picture. You can go to the Shadow drop down, and then you can change some of these settings, such as the size, the amount of blur. You might want it to be a little bit more blurry, the distance, which is how far the image is off of the page. And you can even change the color of the shadow too. If I wanted to make this a little bluer, then there's some options. You can even make it glow if you want. So in the picture format option, there's some defaults for glow, or since I already have the format picture button option right here, then I can go to glow from right here. And I can choose some colors. I can adjust the size if I wanna make it bigger or smaller, adjust the transparency as well. So there's lots of options. Once you have it set to how you want it, you just go ahead and save the picture, and then you can upload it into Canvas. So anyway, this is a great way for you to get your text, especially your banners or maybe section headers to just jump off the page. It makes the content really individual and it helps your students realize that this content was created for them. They'll appreciate your attempts at artistry and you could even change the themes based on the week. You might have a movie theme or a fruit theme. Get creative and have fun with this. The last thing you'll want to do to really make your content pop is go ahead and subscribe to this channel. You can also visit us on social media and follow our tips and tricks. A sub to this channel is like a winning lottery ticket. And I've never bought a lottery ticket, so I don't know what that feels like. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I want to be a lottery winner. So thanks for joining me. And until next time. Happy Disney morning.